Some of you are probably wondering why in the world I'm the master of ceremonies tonight. In fact, I was kind of wondering that myself. Somebody stopped me outside and said, weren't you the one who against, ran against Zell Miller eight years ago? Why in the world are you up here tonight? In fact, Diane and I were talking, and when we stopped talking riding over here, I hallucinated a little bit about eight years ago, and I thought, what would have happened if I had been walking down the Georgia coast one early morning in August of 1990 and come upon a bottle with a top in it and picked it up and rubbed it a little bit, and out came a genie. And the genie said, young man, uh, you've freed me from 2,000 years of slavery. I'll grant any one wish you have. And I probably would have said, well, listen, I'm in a race with a fellow named Zell Miller. And the election's 90 days away. Would you please tell me who wins? She said, sure, but I got some good news for you and some bad news for you. And I said, well, give me the bad news first. The bad news is he going to beat you. I said, well, what in the hell could be the good news? said, eight years from today, you're going to be standing on a podium in Marietta, Georgia, and you're going to help give him the Freedom Award on the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. I would have, I tell you, if it were eight years ago, I'd have grabbed that genie by the nap of her neck, I'd have stuffed her in that bottle, and I'd have thrown her as far out in the Atlantic Ocean as I could. But I am honored and privileged tonight to be a part of a program to honor a great man and a great governor. You know, in our race uh, back in 19, it was a close race. In fact, every year goes by, it gets a little closer. I figured by the time I got grandchildren, I figured out how to win that thing, and it's going to really be good. But anyway, we had a great race. Uh, and there's something about politics that is unique in Zell Miller. Zell Miller kept every political promise that he made when he was elected governor in 1990. And then he commenced to keep every one I made. He just kept every promise that anybody could possibly make. But I'll tell you, and I mean this sincerely, there are a couple of things that are true when you run a statewide race for a high office. First is you get to know two people better than you will ever know any two people in your life. One is yourself, and the other is your opponent. The second thing that is true, as time passes from that event, you learn an awful lot about them by the way they win and by the way they lose. And in Zell Miller, we have, and Georgians, a great winner. And a person, please. I'm going to, in a few minutes, introduce a video where a number of distinguished Georgians are going to go over all the great achievements of the Miller administration, and there are many. But because I was in that unique position of getting to know two people better than any two people you ever get to know, I want to share something with you about Governor Miller. His uniqueness is that he understands there are two P's in politics. The first one is partisanship, and there has never been a better partisan when it was appropriate or timely than Zell Miller. But he knows there's another P, and that is that the day the election's over and the votes are counted, the job is to serve the public, and that's the other P. And I can tell you without any equivocation that we have been blessed for eight years to have someone who not only understood what public service was all about, but served the public and made the lives of every single Georgian better than they had ever been before. <laughs> Zell Miller has written four books in his administration, and two of them are pretty good. <laughs> One of them is Core Values, and I've read it. And I'm just going to conclude and then introduce the video by saying this. You know, those of us that have been in public, public life, it's easy for us to talk. But it's very difficult for many of them to walk the talk. When you read core values, I will tell you this. In the 24 years I have known Zell Miller, before he wrote it, he epitomized the values he stands for. So won't you gaze at the screens to your right or your left and join a number of distinguished Georgians for a few moments 
and reflect on the great accomplishments of a great Georgian, Zell Miller. If imitation is the highest form of flattery, then Georgia Governor Zell Miller's has been flattered by the best. Governor Miller, with the Hope Scholarship, with the pre-kindergarten program, with the commitment to hook up all your schools to the internet, with all the other initiatives, has turned the lights on and America is seeing the light. It has been said that Zell Miller's biggest asset can be traced to his humble beginnings in Young Harris, Georgia. Growing up in a small town really does help you keep perspective on who you are and you, you probably carry with you always those small town values. And Governor Miller, in my opinion, clearly does carry the values of the small town. He cares about people as individuals. His value for education began with his parents, both of whom were educators. He took up teaching as a history professor at Young Harris College. And then Zell Miller got a taste of government. His political career began at age 27 as the youngest mayor of Young Harris. Miller rose through the ranks of Georgia government to become the 79th governor. Isel Brian Miller. Isel Brian Miller. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute the office of governor of the state of Georgia. The office of governor of the state of Georgia. His platform was always education and it has become his legacy. From the passage of the Georgia Lottery to the fruits of its revenue. His example to young people is one of the great legacies he will leave. And of course, what he's done for young people through the pre-kindergarten program, I think it's the best in the nation for four-year-olds. That's gonna pay off big time for Georgia. So both in his, both in his example and in his actions, uh, Governor Zell Miller has done enormous service for our state and particularly for the young people of our state. The great contributions that he made certainly it's the Hope Scholarship would have to be right at the top of the list because not only does it allow people to go who have earned their way into school uh, with a B average, not only does it give them the opportunity to go to school free, uh, and, which is a tremendous opportunity either for vocational school or uh, upper higher education in university or college, but the fact that it keeps some of the brightest and the best people in our state, in our state, as opposed to going away to other schools, uh, which for the future of Georgia will create great leadership and future entrepreneurs and doctors and teachers and just all kinds of great people who will stay here. I think Hope Scholarship has changed everything in the state of Georgia. It's changed higher education uh, by rewarding scholarship and by encouraging students to do well. Uh, academic standards throughout the state are going up because of that. In the seven years since his election, over 400,000 Georgia high school seniors have graduated from public schools far better than the ones that preceded the Miller administration. Over a quarter of a million Georgia four-year-olds have attended a public pre-K kindergarten program that is the envy of the rest of the United States of America. And most importantly, hundreds of thousands of Georgia's teenagers have gone to college on the Governor Miller's Hope Scholarship Program, investing over a billion dollars in their future. Governor Miller's approach to our children and new education has been both colorblind and bipartisan. Governor Miller has also brought Georgia hope by creating diversity and power. Unflawed character, unruffled stability, a good heart, and a first-rate mind. What he has done in the area of appointments is really unparalleled. Uh, I know he's made more appointments and, and created more diversity on the judicial in the judicial arena and on the bench here in this state uh, than any of his predecessors, probably all of his predecessors combined. Uh, and that speaks very well, I think, of Governor Miller. Uh, but it hasn't just been on the bench, it's been in, on boards, uh, committees that he's had the authority to appoint to. Uh, his record is, is absolutely wonderful. Miller learned the value of hard work from his mother, Bertie, who built their home stone by stone. His upbringing and the U.S. Marine Corps taught him values that were passed along to his own family. Make sure my shoes were shined and uh, I'll always be on time. The things he taught me growing up were that you have a responsibility to yourself and to really everyone else to do your best, to be involved in your 
community where you live, things that happen around you, that you've, you've got to be part of things. You can't just stand aside and watch the world go by, that you've got to get in there and do a little fighting and do a little bit of uh, what you can to put it in the direction you want to go. That's the main thing. He taught me that uh, you've got to you've got to go you've got to go after what you want, and you've got to be focused and be part of things. You can't just stand aside. From Young Harris to the big city, Miller had to make only small adjustments to his new life. Last year, the governor announced that after being on the ballot in Georgia 22 times, he would never seek public office again. I will never be a candidate for any office, any office again in my life. So when his term ends next year, he will return to what he loves best. I expect him to report for work the, uh, the day after his successor is inaugurated. I, I agree with Zell, you know, that it's time for, uh, for him to, to stop being a, a candidate. Uh, I think that, you know, there's a lot of other things that he wants to do. He wants to, uh, to teach again, and uh, he wants to do some writing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's important to know when to go home in this business. Governor Zell Miller, the ultimate teacher and the man who brought us all hope. Governor, I've covered you for 15 years now, and I must say it has never been a dull experience. I've gone with you from your home in the mountains in Young Harris to the drill fields of your marine boot camp at Paris Island. I've traveled with you to South Georgia where I watched Tammy Wynette stand on a stage with her arm around you singing, Stand By Your Man. And I was with you in New York City when you were a star at the Democratic Convention. I've talked to you about your love for drama, your love for baseball, for music, and for politics, of course. And I must say that of all the people I've covered in my career here at Channel 2, it's been an especial honor to watch you. One of the most interesting things about you, Governor, is that the people of this state are quite likely to give you a particular honor. Next year, they may very well think that they're electing you for a third term when they make Guy Milner Governor of Georgia. It's no secret that I just flat love Zell Miller. His story is an all-American success story. Born in a pocket of poverty, raised without a father, shaped by a strong mother, the remarkable Bertie Miller, and by a stern marine drill instructor. Tested in the crucible, he emerged as strong as steel and rose to become perhaps the finest governor Georgia ever had. The man who first used the toughness of boot camps to turn around the lives of young offenders, the man who reformed state government, cut waste, invested in Georgia's future, but most important of all, Zell Miller will forever be known as the title of the wonderful new biography of him says, as the man who gave Georgia hope. And his hope inspired me to ask America to embrace the Hope Scholarship Program too. And now we have it as part of our balanced budget. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about Zell Miller is not how far he's risen, but what he's done since he got there. He's never forgotten who he is, where he came from, who sent him to his present position. He'll always be Zell Miller from Georgia for Georgia. Zell, you helped to make me your president, and I'm very proud to be your friend. If every person in America could have the kind of loyalty and commitment and strength you do to your friends and loved ones in your beloved Georgia, this country would have no problems at all. We are all very grateful to you. We thank you for showing us the way, for being an inspiration and a wonderful friend. God bless you. If you'll uh, pick up the most recent copy of South Magazine, you'll find they wrote a hundred Georgians and asked them to pontificate on what they thought George would be like in 25 years. I happened to read it the other night and I saw in there where Governor Miller's response to that was a letter that said, Dear Sirs, 25 years from now I will be dead and forgotten. That was all it sincerely zeal.
I'm not good enough and certainly not an astrologer, and I have no idea whether or not the first claim is true, but I can tell you that for millions of Georgia children to come in the future to be educated in a system that pays for excellence through the Hope Scholarship, one thing is definitely sure, and that is that Zell Miller will never be forgotten. Let me also take this opportunity to introduce what other person that Young Harris has produced for our state, who's here to tell, share a few thoughts he has about Governor Miller tonight. Congressman Ed Jenkins is a man of the mountains. He and his lovely wife, Joe are committed Georgians. Unfortunately, in politics, when you leave office, people sometimes forget pretty quickly some of the things that you did, but I have always admired Ed Jenkins for a number of reasons. Although we come from different political parties, I always admired his commitment to the taxpayer and saw him on the Ways and Means Committee in Congress fight for lower taxes, more equitable taxation, and more favorable treatment for capital gains. I watched him as a man represent the people who he represented, the textile people and the poultry people of North Georgia. In fact, some of the textile legislation that was introduced by Ed Jenkins in Congress was landmark legislation for a key and vital industry in Georgia. But probably least known, maybe not even remembered, it was Ed Jenkins who was handpicked to go on a select committee on Iran-Contra, who went in when all kind of partisan politicians were trying to figure out how to gut one another, and kind of got down to the issues of fact and law, and brought some sort of order out of what had been a whole lot of chaos. George has been very fortunate to have rep been represented in Congress by Ed Jenkins, and I feel very fortunate tonight to introduce you, the former congressman from North Georgia, and a great citizen of our state, the Honorable Ed Jenkins. Ed? Thank you so very much, Johnny, for those kind words. Before I get into uh, this light tribute to my lifelong friend, Governor Miller, uh, let me introduce another great graduate of Young Harris College, the lovely Shirley Miller. I watched that film and tore up the six pages of my speech that I was to give tonight. But really, I came through three tornadoes uh, to get down here. If I had learned, after leaving Congress almost six years ago, how to use a fax machine, I would have just faxed my remarks down <laughs> and uh, waited to watch it on television. But unfortunately, I never did learn how to use a fax machine, so I don't have one. I did learn how to receive a fax, but I never did learn how to send one. This is a great honor for me. Uh, Rogers Wade has given me exactly eight and a half minutes to pay tribute to my lifelong friend, both of us whom were born in Young Harris, grew up together, uh, known each other all of our lives, the good and the bad. It's a genuine pleasure for me to take a few moments to talk about Zell Miller. I'm not going to talk a great deal about education because everyone knows what he has contributed to education. This is not a first for me or for the governor. You see, it is a little known fact, but I've spoken about Zell Miller and to Zell Miller about a lot of things during our lifetimes. Most were pleasant. I must tell you, though, that one of the grandest moments of my own political life was when I had the privilege of introducing, in the form of placing his name in nomination, the same Zell Miller when he ran for office as governor, for governor, in 1990. It was on that occasion that I reminded the assembled crowd of Georgians using the analogy of an eagle, having wanted probably to give the bird 
during his time as lieutenant governor to a lot of people. I thought it was most appropriate that I talk about the eagle. It soared over the pristine forest of the southern parts of these United States. But secondly, it never flew alone uh, uh, in a flock. It, all, it was always alone. And that was Zell Miller to a great extent. So many of you tonight may have had a pet project or a bill passed through the General Assembly only to see it shot down at some later time by a veto. It's likely that that lone eagle, Zell Miller, stretched his sharp claws in its direction simply because he thought it wasn't the right time, the right place for that particular piece of legislation. I know that tributes of this nature can be somewhat tricky. We all admit that some of the tributes can become a bit boring with rote data from a biography or things that are funny only to the speaker. I speak from personal experience when after I had served two terms in the U.S. Congress, a gala gathering had assembled up in a county in my district as I was introduced as the Honorable Phil Landrum. On a more memorable occasion, after having gotten lost trying to find a civic club meeting up in northwest Georgia in my district, I was introduced as the state fire marshal. <laughs> Those were very omelin times for me and for my assistants who were young people in the political life. And maybe I'll find that the governor will find the next four or five minutes somewhat equally humbling. <laughs> As I've said, I'd tr I've tried to put some time in this tribute, and since you're not paying me anything, I've decided to take up as much time as I thought you could possibly bear. <laughs> you remember that I served eight terms, 16 years in the Congress, an exact and modern day average for a United States congressman, four times, four, four years in office and four years in prison. <laughs> I'm delighted that I didn't serve that second half in prison. Going back to my preparation for this event, I re recollected the governor's first book called The Mountains Within Me, published in 1976, in the middle of his first term as lieutenant governor. Since he didn't have a garage, he sold literally thousands of copies of that book the old-fashioned way. To anybody, probably including lobbyists, I don't know, to those who really needed to see him about something, he'd always mention his book. <laughs> it was a delightful book and a great first bestseller for Zell Miller. And I thought it was a real marketing plan that I've never forgotten. But tonight I have pleasure to announce, before any word has been leaked to the media, and I know that some of the media is here, that the governor is planning yet another book. It is a book which contains his very best letters from his public career, the scarlet letters of, of Zell Miller. <laughs> I'm convinced that it's going to become a bestseller very quickly. Having reviewed the galley copy, I found the following letters ready for publication. One to Assistant Attorney General Henry Land. One to Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist Mike Lukovich. And one, of course, to Jane Fonda. I always enjoyed being occasionally invited to sit with Zell in the Turner box. I guess in the future we'll be out in the bleachers of the... <laughs> watching from right field. Not only did I carry my research through his world record 16 years as lieutenant governor, 
but also through his world record, eight years is one term, stay in the governor's mansion. <laughs> Zell was never good at math. <laughs> he said he'd serve one term and he did. No one ever told him that it was only four year terms. He has been on the ballot so often that he automatically, like Mac Barber, a uh, went to the qualify. There are so many secrets that I could share with you about Zell Miller, but I'm afraid there might be, and I know there are some reporters in the audience, or that Miss Fonda would really be tempted to visit the hills from whence we cometh. <laughs> there is a historical secret I would like to share with you, though, since it, 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 since it involves the very hallmark of his accomplishments, the Hope Scholarship. It has achieved national acclaim, as you have seen, and as you already know, in that it is a virtual first, whereby our poor gambling Democrats pay for the College of Children of Republicans. <laughs> What a novel way to win an election. <laughs> but the program did not start with the name Hope. Many Georgians with Gaelic roots like Zell and I from the mountains say hope instead of help. For example, I'd like to hope you change that tire. Or I wish I could hope you, but the teacher's looking. <laughs> or rich Republicans have been hoping us Democrats for years. <laughs> you see and you read Snuffy Smith in the funny papers every day. And occasionally you'll see his name mentioned in a letter to the editor of the Atlanta Constitution. But that's what Snuffy said, hope instead of help to us dedicated readers. But I want to share with you tonight another thing, in that it is a footnote of history. And that is that the first lottery funded, state-supported lottery that Miller appointed, anointed scholarship program was really HEP. That's what we say, HEP. Walk into any McDonald's north of Ackworth and the first thing they'll say, can I help you? It was our mountain ancestors who said hope. It is the modern mountain generation that says hip. Now that made for a public relations nightmare, nightmare for this governor and his scholarship program. When I first heard about the program called HIP, I thought it stood for hell everybody plays. <laughs> Alas, as the statesman he is, he worked hard to pronounce it hope. And like many, many other ideas he's had throughout the years, it brought due credit to this great man. It's helped him a whole lot. <laughs> Zell Miller helped me as a congressman when I tried in vain to represent some more conservative suburbanites down in Gwinnett County. He helped, he helped me draw the lines a little bit better for the Ninth <laughs> District. He helped me by naming me to the University Board of Regents where I have the privilege of serving today, not for the contributions that I might make to the university system, but to help Steve Porch and Zell Miller by translating Steve Porch to Zell Miller. <laughs> Zell Miller is even helping newborn babies by getting them to listen to classical music. Not his first preference in music, but nonetheless, his choice. And he's helped you here tonight, all of you, because I know this crowd. Because if you haven't made any money during the Miller administration, I advise you to go into the ministry or someplace because you ain't going to make no money. <laughs> I know I've talked too long. 
But I've really enjoyed this, and I, I've enjoyed my six-decade association with Zella Miller. And so, if I may, I want to take a very few shining moments for a personal and very serious reflection. It is by no accident that times are good in this state. It is not a coincidence, not a fluke, not just being in the right state at the right time. It is by dramatic design. It is the design of Zell Miller, a man supported early by an entire town, Young Harris, with the encouragement of a family and high expectations of the people of that community. It is the design of a man raised by a single parent, Bertie Miller, whom I knew and loved, and nurtured by his family and his community. It is the design of a man drenched with self-esteem early in his life and who began running for governor while being enrolled at Young Harris College. I knew 50 years ago that Zell Miller would become governor of our state. I was positive of it. It is the design of a governor whose teachers paid special attention in his early preparation and who himself expected good things of himself. It is the design of a gentleman who is living, breathing, breathing proof that it does take a town or a village to raise up a child. And that's been another hallmark of the Miller administration. From peach care to pre-K, to hope, to boot camps, to two strikes and much more. That is the design and life of Zell Miller. I could say a lot of things about the, the traits of Zell Miller, but the single most important trait of Zell Miller is that he is able and willing to pay the price, to face adversity, to face defeat, to get up off the mat and fight again. Many people do not know this. He lost two races for Congress. He lost one race for the U.S. Senate. I have seen him when he was very low but not for long. He, his entire life, has been devoted to never quitting. He has never quit during his entire life. I've been on the baseball field with him when the score was seven to nothing against us, and he was still plugging to win. I have seen him as a catcher in baseball, run over by somebody three times his size, and seen him get up and never quit. We have a little known economic indicator in this state that I'd like to mention tonight as I finish my remarks. That indicator is called the GSP, or Gross State Product. It's a measure of our goods and our services that bolster this robust economy of ours. But we must be careful not to measure the economy merely in terms of wealth. The GSP, the gross state product, counts air pollution and cigarette advertising. It counts the ambulances needed to pick up our dead. It counts dead boat locks on our doors. And it counts jail sales for our prisoners and it counts the drugs for our addicted. Yet, the gross state product does not include in its formula for the health of our children or the joy of their play. It ignores the intelligence of public debate or the integrity of our public officials. 
It measures neither our wit nor our courage, neither our compassion nor our devotion to our state and nation. It can tell us everything about Georgia except why we are proud to be Georgians. It is my belief, my hope, my prediction that when the legacy of Zell Miller and the Zell Miller administration is compiled, one which is done in grand Churchillian style and fashion, it will be one of health, of joy, of integrity, of intelligence, of wit, of courage, of compassion and devotion. It will be about the village which helped raise a great Georgian. And most of all, it will be about goodness for all Georgians by the greatest governor that we have had. Thank you very much. easy to see why he was so effective in Congress for 16 years. Great job, Congressman Jenkins. We appreciate it. I know Governor Miller does. It is now a real privilege for me to introduce a, a very special person. Uh, the Georgia Public Policy Foundation has forged over the years many positive changes in Georgia by, in its nonpartisan but very specific way, raising issues of importance above political rhetoric to a point where politicians focus on them and ultimately quality decisions are made. Such an organization never exists without three or four key characteristics. One characteristic is very important is its ability to raise funds and that requires its organization to have integrity. Obviously the Public Policy Foundation has done that. Second, it must have day-to-day -day leadership that has both experience as well as the respect of the community and in Rogers Wade certainly the Georgia Public Policy Foundation has that. But thirdly and most importantly, it has to have one of those unique things, an unselfish individual who could do lots of things with their time but shares a portion of their time and a portion of themselves to provide the leadership of a board of directors. One such person is the chairman of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation, Hank McCamish, for whom I have a high regard for a reason Hank probably would never think I would mention. Thanks to Governor Miller, I've had to take a particular interest in education over the last few years, last couple of years. And in so doing, I have found one of the great tragedies is not what government doesn't do, but what so many private citizens don't do, because education is a team sport. We all know the Policy Foundation itself believes that Less government is better, and you can't expect government to do everything. And there's nothing more important than our children, nothing more important than post-secondary education, nothing more important than that little word called enrichment. Well, I encourage you one day soon to ride to a little college in northwest Georgia, about a third of the way to Young Harris, in the foothills of Cherokee County called Reinhardt College. And when you go see its state-of-the-art studios and telecommunications, it's got a little trademark. Hank McCamish not only gave so much to enable it to be there, but spends much of his time seeing to it that Reinhardt College is a better place, an enriched place, for the students that go there. So just as Governor Miller walks what he talks, Hank McCamish's public policy is to make an investment back in his community. And it's my privilege and pleasure to ask him to join us on the stage to present tonight's award. Hank. Thank you, Johnny. You know, tonight is truly a magnificent night for the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. And I personally welcome each of you and thank each of you for joining us to honor our governor. You've heard from Congressman Jenkins, Johnny Isaacson, and even the president about our guest tonight. 
He has been truly an outstanding governor and has made his mark on our state with his many thoughtful programs and his long service to the people of Georgia. However, as significant as his contributions have been, we do not feel that they measure up to the man himself. A couple of years ago, as you have heard, the governor wrote this little book called Core Values. In it, he talks about the values that went into making him the man that he is today, the leader that he is today. And I recommend that each of you read this book. Governor Miller writes about the core values that he believes are essential, and I quote, for the survival of a society in which individuals can achieve for themselves and can contribute to the advancement of mankind as a whole. As a young Marine, but I believe more important from Miller, from your mother, he learned a value system that has been the foundation of his public life and his private life. And let me just mention, refer to four of the values he mentions in his book. Persistence, discipline, responsibility, and respect. Our recipient tonight has shown tremendous persistence in accomplishing his goals in over 30 years of public service. And as you've heard Congressman Jenkins, I really don't believe the governor knows the word quit. He has demonstrated great discipline in sticking to the course on which he embarked. He knew where he wanted to go and exhibited the discipline to get there. He's never refused to accept the responsibility, and you heard his son comment also, for his actions. And he has achieved the respect of all his fellow Georgians, be they Democrat, Republican, or Independent as he has proceeded to streamline state government and instill pride in a state that for years lagged behind the nation in education. The Freedom Award is given tonight to a man who has set Georgia on a course toward greatness. His vision and leadership have provided us with the ability to move into the 21st century as full-fledged partners in the battle to provide every Georgian with the opportunity to be a truly free individual and the chance to come from humble beginnings all the way to the pinnacle of leadership. Georgia has been blessed with many women who have given us strong leadership and direction in both business and politics. Zell Miller will forever stand tall among those who have given the state much, much more than they have ever asked in return. We are truly blessed, Governor that we have had you to lead us. And it is my pleasure, on behalf of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation and its members, to present the 1998 Freedom Award to the Governor of Georgia, Zell Miller. Governor Miller. <laughs>
Mr. McCamish, I thank you for this award. I thank all the members of the Public Policy Foundation who made the decision to give it to me. I thank you for this night. It is an evening that uh, I know that Shirley and I will never forget. The respect that I have for Johnny Isaacson is enormous. And I will forever be grateful to him for the contribution that he has made to my administration, to Superintendent Shrinko and the State Department of Education, to this state and to our children. No one, no one in this state could have done what you have done better. His is a career to be honored. Here is a life to be emulated. And I thank you very, very much. I cannot remember when I did not know Ed Jenkins. He is the best friend I have ever had. We were born 800 yards apart and eight months apart. He is one of the most intelligent persons I have ever known. Sometimes uh, he blurs that tremendous intelligence with stories and uh, wit and good down-home common sense. But behind that sense of humor and that mountain accent is a brilliant and a cunning mind. And I'm very proud of our lifelong friendship. Thank you for coming here tonight to help me. <laughs> Thank you for not telling the story about Ezel. Lieutenant Governor Pierre Howard, it means a great deal to me that uh, you would be here. You have played a very, very important part in what has happened in this state in the last 24 years. And thank you for your service to the state of Georgia. <laughs> to, be, uh, to be included with a group of recipients like Dean Day Smith and Truett Cathy and others who have received this award is, is tremendous. And I appreciate the fact that Mr. Cathy mentioned that today is National Prayer Day. It is uh, something that we should be reminded of. In every United States history course that I taught, and I taught a lot of them. I never fail to tell my uh, students about that day in Philadelphia in 17 and 87 when things were going particularly bad and it was divisive. And the oldest delegate there, Benjamin Franklin, who was 81 at the time, stood up and uh, said to the group that he had lived a long, long time and the longer he lived, the more convinced he was of one truth, that God governs the affairs of man. And he then went on to say, and if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, how can an empire rise without his aid? And he made a motion that they take a recess and that they come back and that they start their morning sessions each day with a daily prayer. And they did that, and they came back, and in that renewed atmosphere, out of it came the United States Constitution. Ed and I were five-year-old kids in Young Harris when a president of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, stood on the steps of the United States Capitol at that time, and 
looked south and said, I see one third of a nation, ill housed, ill clad, ill nourished. He went ahead to call the South the number one economic problem in the country. I and many of you grew up in that South. But that South, that South is gone with the wind. It is no more. In fact, today, if you were to separate out that one-third of the nation, I'm not recommending that now, of course. We tried that one time. But, <laughs> but, but if you were to separate out that one-third of the nation, the South by itself would have the fifth largest economy in the world. And at the hub of this vibrant and growing region is our state of Georgia, a state whose economy has outperformed the nation's every year since 1991, some years by more than 80 percent. A state with 1,600 international businesses and 11 overseas trade offices. A state that has created an average of over 2,000 new jobs a week since 1991, a state that last year led the nation in the creation of high-tech jobs. Can you believe that? Georgia leading the nation in high-tech job growth. And one of the reasons that companies come to Georgia is because they know that they are beginning to be able now to find the skilled and the educated workforce that they will need in the 21st century. My, my goal as governor was to create in this state what I call a culture of higher expectations. A culture of higher expectations. I wanted the question to be not whether you're going to go to a college or to a technical school, but where you're going to go to a college or a technical school. And today there's a modern public technical school within 45 minutes driving time of every citizen of this state. And unlike the other 49 states where the rising cost of college tuition is sinking families deeper and deeper into debt, in Georgia, 97% of the in-state freshmen at Georgia Tech and at the University of Georgia are Hope Scholars who pay no tuition at all. At a time when many universities around this country are seeing state-sponsored research decline, Georgia is now one of the top two states in the nation in state funding for research and development. And the primary reason is the Georgia Research Alliance, which is a public-private partnership whose board is dominated by private industry. We are also the state that leads the nation in the use of telecommunications for education and medical services. And as been mentioned, we're the only state in the nation that has a pre-kindergarten program for all four-year-olds. In short, Georgia is a place where businesses and where people want to be. And the reason is because the issues that we are facing are the ones and that we're focusing on are the issues that really matter to our citizens. Improving education and creating jobs and preserving the environment and making state government more efficient and effective and physically responsive. That is why, and this is the most important thing that I'm going to say tonight, that is why these programs that I have put forth have been supported by both Republicans and Democrats. It could not have been done without that kind of bipartisan support. And no one realizes that better than I. I like to hear all these wonderful and beautiful words about what I've done, but I know better than anyone that it was done with strong bipartisan support. And that's why we have been able to make significant and visible progress. 
I am deeply grateful for this award. I expected at any moment someone to say the words, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. <laughs> or come up and say, don't he look natural? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for all the kind words that have been said tonight. And thank you for this opportunity to tell you a little bit about a state that has been getting ready for the 21st century as few other states have. God bless you all. I'll never forget you.